Hello, I'm Rob Burgess, Vice President of Global Business Development for Ray Biotech Incorporated. And today I'm going to present to you three novel research publications in which Ray Biotech antibody arrays were utilized to discover novel biomarkers as well as to characterize new pathways involved in biology and disease. So the first paper that I'm going to present to you is a paper out of Daniel Haber's research lab, which is based at Harvard Medical School. Daniel's favorite transcription factor is known as YES-associated protein, or YAP. Now, YAP is a transcriptional regulator that plays roles both in normal organ proliferation as well as the epithelial to mesenchymal transition in embryonic development, but it's also known to be highly upregulated in cancers and actually plays an essential role in malignancy or transformation. So what Daniel's group did was they utilized the Ray Biotech Human Growth Factor Array 1 and the Ray Biotech EGF Receptor Phosphorylation Array to outline a novel pathway that involves YAP in the transformation of epithelial cells. And this is the way they set the experiment up. They utilized the epithelial non-transformed cell line, MCF10A, and they transfected this cell line transiently with either empty plasmid vector or a vector that expresses a constitutively active form of YES-associated protein. These transfections were done then either in the presence or the absence of epidermal growth factor. And what you can see here is there really is no significant change between the empty vector control in the presence of EGF or with the constitutively active control. But in the absence of EGF, what we see is a vast upregulation of various growth factors which are present in the YAP constitutively active version of the transfected experiment. So we can see, again, an indeed a change in biomarker presence and expression in the presence of constitutively active YAP in the MCF10A cell line. These include upregulations in IGF binding protein 6, PDGFAA, and macrophage colony stimulating factor receptor, as well as antheregulin. Now, Daniel's group studied each of these individual targets at the mRNA level by quantitative RT-PCR, and it was only antheregulin that was shown to truly be induced at the transcriptional level. So Daniel's group then performed knockdown experiments in which they utilized a blocking antibody to antheregulin to abrogate or eliminate the function of YAP in these cells. And what they noticed was that cell proliferation was vastly, and cell transformation was vastly decreased or reduced or inhibited in the presence of the blocking antibody, which blocks antheregulin binding to its receptor. The other interesting thing that they determined was this was a non-cell autonomous effect. So by blocking antheregulin, they actually saw an inhibition of transformation in cells that did not express the constitutively active YAP. So Daniel's group took this a step further, and they realized that antheregulin is a well-known ligand for the EGF receptor. So Daniel's group then performed a similar experiment in which they transfected the epithelial cell line, MCF10A, either with empty vector or a vector that expresses constitutively activated YAP. This was done in either the presence of EGF or the absence of EGF. In the presence of EGF, transformation occurs, and upregulation of phosphorylation occurs in either case. Yet it's only in the absence of EGF, but in the presence of constitutively active YAP, that specific tyrosine residues now were identified as being phosphorylated on the EGF receptor. This confirms then that in the presence of constitutively activated YAP, this results in an activation of antheregulin which binds to the EGF receptor and promotes phosphorylation of EGF receptor. And this phosphorylation occurs on EGF receptors in neighboring cells that do not express the constitutively active version of YAP. So to conclude this first manuscript, YAP is known as YES-associated protein, and it's known to be highly upregulated in malignancy and cancers and play a role in transformation. 
Utilizing the Ray Biotech Human Growth Factor Array, what Daniel's group showed was that amphiregulin is actually a direct target of yes-associated protein. Amphiregulin actually results in the phosphorylation of the EGF receptor, and this was characterized using the Ray Biotech EGF receptor phosphorylation array. This phosphorylation, interestingly, does occur on EGF receptors on adjacent cells. So it's a cell, it's a non-cell autonomous effect that's occurring here. And this results in cell proliferation and ultimately transformation. So using two independent Ray Biotech arrays, antibody arrays, Daniel's group outlined an entire pathway involved in transformation. The second paper that I would like to present to you today is a paper by Josti's Rao group, Josti Rao's group out of the University of Illinois in Peoria. Josti Rao and colleagues noticed that Upar and Cathepsin B, uroplasminogen activating receptor, and Cathepsin B are known to have a negative effect on apoptosis. So that means that when these are overexpressed, they inhibit the apoptotic cascades that normally occur in cells. When these are overexpressed, um, this can often result in malignancy or transformation. And in fact, these are highly overexpressed in high-grade gliomas. And the hypothesis is this is a result of the glioma phenotype is the result of the inhibition of apoptosis. So again, overexpression of UPAR and cathepsin B correlates with the cancer phenotype and poor prognosis in patients. So Josti Rao's group utilized the Ray Biotech human apoptosis array to define a novel anti-apoptotic pathway in which UPAR and cathepsin B were involved. And this is how they set the experiment up. This is siRNA mediated uh, transient knockdown of both uh, UPAR and cathepsin B. SV stands for scrambled vector. PCU is a vector or plasma that contains that codes for siRNA that temporarily knock down cathepsin B and UPAR. And they studied the two high-grade glioma cell lines, U251 and 5310. In the present, this, these are, uh, and in addition to that, you utilize the Ray Biotech Human Apoptosis Antibody Array. This is a membrane-based array. Here's scrambled vector utilizing these two transformed cell lines. And then the two transformed cell lines transiently transfected with an siRNA plasmid, which temporarily knocks down both cathepsin B and UPAR. And what we can see is vast differences or changes in the expression of various apoptotic markers. These are markers that are known to be involved in apoptosis. Some of them went up in regulation, others went down in regulation. And these are some of the biomarkers that they identified in this as playing a role in this. Bax, BCL2, caspase 3, and P27. And what Josti's group noticed was that there was a consistent increase in BACS levels of expression in both of these cell lines and a consistent decrease in BCL2 levels of expression in each of these cell lines. This was confirmed then at the protein level. And what's known now is that love ratios of BCL2 and BACS play a role in regulating CREB and specifically the translocation of CREB into the nucleus, which would abrogate or play roles in controlling the apoptotic cascade. So again, this was confirmed at the protein level by Western blot. In an siRNA knockdown, UPAR siRNA mediated knockdown results in a decrease in the ratio B BCL2 and BACs. Uh, cathepsin B transient knockdown results in a decrease of the ratio of BCL2 and VAX, and it was also confirmed utilizing the scrambled vector for both. And again, this was also confirmed at the mRNA level. So the conclusion of this paper then is that UPAR and cathepsin B directly regulate ratios of BCL2 and VAX um, levels within cells. And this was identified utilizing the Ray Biotech Human Apoptosis C-Series Membrane-Based Array. In addition to that, they showed that caspase 3 and P27 were also regulated by UPAR and cathepsin B. So the regulation of UPAR and cathepsin B results in a regulation of CREB. And an inhibition of CREB 
to translocate into the nucleus results in an inhibition of apoptosis and high-grade gliomas. The Jostis group got a very nice PLOS-1 paper out of this study using the Ray Biotech Human Apoptosis Array. And the final paper that I'd like to present to you today is a paper by Todd Golub's lab in collaboration with Bravid Straussman. And they are out of the Broad Institute as well as the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. And in this, what they did was they looked to determine what secreted factors actually elicit anti-cancer drug resistance. Stromal cells, which are present in and adjacent to tumors, but not part of the tumors, have long been thought to promote cancer drug resistance. Melanoma lines um, were utilized actually as the model system here, and the drug target is known as BRAF, and BRAF is actually um, a target that's sought out to be inhibited by many different types of anti-cancer drugs. So this cell line was used as a model system, and Todd Golub's group used the Ray Biotech L507 and the G4000 arrays to identify secreted factors that were secreted from stromal cells, which result in cancer drug resistance or an inhibition of cancer drugs to inhibit uh, BRAF signaling, which actually promotes proliferation. This is how they set the experiment up. They utilized 23 independent stromal cell lines. They co-mixed these, did a co-culture with 45 independent cancer cell lines. And then they treated this mixture with 35 independent cancer drugs. All of these drugs were designed to inhibit BRAF. And this is how the experiment was set up. BRAF inhibitors, BRAF inhibitors initially result in cell death. But over time, this becomes resistant. In the co-culture situation with the stromal cells, ultimately, even adding the, the anti-cancer drugs, graph inhibition is ineffective and the cells survive. So they took samples, actually from the media, to determine what it is that these stromal cells are secreting that would result in this anti-cancer or anti-BRAF inhibition. They utilized Ray Biotech L507 series and G4000 series of arrays to screen what's present in the media being secreted by the stromal cells, and they identified as the culprit human growth factor. And they confirmed this. They further confirmed that human growth factor is actually what's being secreted into the co-culture system that ultimately confers resistance to BRAF inhibition. So normally, initially, a BRAF inhibitor um, BRAF, BRAF normally acts to kill cells through a BRAF inhibitor, an anti-cancer therapeutic. But if you utilize recombinant human growth factor, what you could see is that actually results in cell survival. And they demonstrated this in tissue culture. Secondly, they showed that utilizing a neutralizing antibody to the actual drug, a neutralizing antibody to the anti-cancer drug, also prevents BRAF inhibition and allows cells to survive. In addition to that, a neutralizing antibody to uh, the recombinant human growth factor, as you can see here, actually results in cell survival as well. And finally, inhibition of the receptor that's involved here, the BRAF receptor, which is met, inhibition of that also allows for cells to survive. So the conclusion here is, utilizing the Ray Biotech L4000 and G4000 arrays, that HGF is the factor involved in chemo resistance. So in summary then, I presented three papers to you in which Ray Biotech antibody arrays were used to, number one, identify a transcriptional cascade, which is involved in non-cell autonomous tumorigenic signaling. This was the yes-associated protein paper by Daniel Haber's group. In addition, I presented to you a novel pro-apoptotic pathway involving both UPAR and Cathepsin B that's involved in high-grade gliomas by inhibiting apoptosis by Josti Rao's group out of the University of Illinois. And finally, I presented a paper by Todd Golub's group out of the Broad Institute and Dana Farber in which they identified a locally secreted factor, specifically human growth factor, which drives anti-cancer resistance in melanoma cells. So that concludes this presentation, and I hope that these
presentations and these particular manuscripts have given you some new ideas about how you can utilize ray biotech antibody arrays in your research to identify novel biomarkers as well as to characterize novel pathways involved in biology and disease. Thank you for your time.